Hello and welcome back to Building Predictive Systems with Python and Machine Learning. We're starting a new section today about exploring various model types, SVMs, linear models, and random forests. In this section, we're going to take a look at number one, what makes models truly different, understanding the advantages and shortcomings of most popular models. We're going to talk about in the third video, an SVM, a random forest, and a linear model. We're going to talk about and try out SVM models to see how we can fix them, and also try out a random forest model on a Titanic datasets and how we can fix that too. So what makes models truly different? In this video, we're going to take a look at number one, what are model assumptions, parameters, and hyperparameters, different types of models, different flavors of models. Let's dive in. Models, assumptions, parameters, and hyperparameters. So in Building predictive systems, there are three core concepts in terms of what model you pick. In the top layer, we have assumptions, so we can see in the top box. The model assumption dictates two things. Number one, what can this model learn? And number two, what does this data look like? A very base case is linear regression, right? A linear model can learn linear relationships between the design matrix or the features and the target. A very convenient way to say this is the features are assumed to grow linearly with the target. Something that is a good example is age and height in a baby before, let's say, the age of 20, right? Generally, the older you are, the taller you are, generally. That's a linear relationship. A non-linear relationship is when we look at the height of a person over his entire lifetime. Age no longer correlates linearly with height because you stop growing taller after a certain age. The other model assumption that is made is the data. Some models don't require any assumptions in data. For example, linear regression is very easy. Some other models, for example, regularized linear models, assume that, for example, data is scaled, which means that all of your features range from 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1, and nothing else. The reason why we need to understand this is because if we don't know the model assumptions, we can't properly apply the model onto our data, right? Because we have no idea whether the data fits with the model, if the model assumes the data to be a particular shape or feature and you have no idea how the model or what the model can learn and adjust it accordingly with the data and exploration analysis that you'll be performing. To understand the assumptions I'll show you later is the best way to understand assumptions is Wikipedia or the scikit-learn documentation. Beneath assumptions is hyperparameters. So now that we know for example a linear model captures linear relationships there are still hyperparameters of the model which refer to the flavors or the variation of a particular model. What this means is even if a linear model can learn linear relationships, it can learn linear relationships in, let's say, five different ways. Hyperparameters allows us to specify in what way do we want our linear model to learn the linear relationship. Further down the line, we have parameters. So parameters are fitted, and they're what is learned knowledge, right? So let's, again, talk about a linear model. In the linear model, the parameter is what's the coefficient for a particular feature, right? So if we look at age and height again, during the child, during a person's early ages, we can know that the larger the age, we can approximately apply, let's say, a factor of 20 to the age and get the height. So we learn this factor or the coefficient from the data, right? And that's where the knowledge of the predictive system is learned, and that's the parameters. Now let's look at different types of models and their assumptions and also different flavors of some models. If we go to the API reference of scikit-learn, we can see all the different models that scikit-learn supports. We have clustering models, which don't require you to have a target and it can do unsupervised learning on your design matrix directly. We have ensemble methods, which 
includes ensemble-based methods for classification, regression, and anomaly detection. What this means is ensemble methods allow us to put multiple models together and have them vote on the final outcome. So it aggregates the power of different models to predict the final outcome. We have Gaussian processes, which are models that assume for each data point, there is a Gaussian distribution around the data points, and it uses the Gaussian distributions to formulate where the fitted line should be. We have linear models, which includes all the models that give you the ability to express linear relationships between features and the response. We have Gaussian mixture models, which allow us to model distributions with a net with a combination of Gaussian distributions. We have naive Bayes models, which assume that each feature is independent of other features, and it uses a Bayes rule to back out what's the importance of each feature against the response. We have nearest neighbors, which simply creates the prediction by looking at what are the nearest data points to the data point we're trying to predict and then using the majority label of their neighbors as the prediction with neural networks and with support vector machines, we're going to take a look at in a few videos in this section. We also have decision trees, which allows us to split our data sets according to a few criteria. And then within each split, we then further split it with another criteria. And that's the whole of scikit-learn. So I do encourage you to read through most of this. It takes a while, but you don't need to read it all in one go. Let's go back to linear models and look at flavors. If we look at the most basic logistic regression, which we have used in the last video, we can see that there are a lot of parameters. So we can set the penalty, we can set the dual or primal formation, and set the tolerance, the fit intercepts, the intercept scaling, all these terms are quite complicated, but they mean something quite simple at the back. The flavors of logistic regression allows us to adjust how the logistic regression is constructed and the way it interacts with the data. So this is the flavor of a model. That's all there is to it. We learned about what are assumptions of models, parameters of models, and different hyperparameters. We looked at different types of models that we can use in scikit-learn to build our predictive system. We learned about different flavors of models. So this is meant to be a high-level introduction to core concepts in this, and you're going to see more and more of how this is going to be applied as the course goes along.